Hello again, APCAP BC students, Mr. Record here, and we are finally at our fifth and final video that wraps up all of the ideas that we've recently discussed about logistic growth. And as you remember, we're talking about a very specific kind of logistic differential equation that produces a solution that's only going to be tested on the BC Calc exam. And we're going to take a look at a real world contextual problem that ties in a lot of these ideas that we've talked about. This problem is a problem that could appear in the AP exam, or at least parts of it could be. It could possibly be rewritten as a multiple choice question. But I think the ideas uh, uh, presented are going to be very useful for you to apply that knowledge that we've talked about. So we're going to talk about panthers in the wild. So here we go. In our problem, we have a conservation organization that releases 30 panthers into a preserve. After three years, there are 50 panthers in the preserve, and the preserve has a carrying capacity of 150. The growth rate of the panther population is given by this differential equation, and it has a solution given by this equation. Now, very fortunately for us, the, the two forms of our logistic growth are given, both the differential equation and its solution. But as I've kind of reiterated many times in my previous videos, that it would be very much in your best interest to memorize those two in case you encounter a problem where the equation is not provided. So for part A, it's not going to take a lot of effort, hopefully, to find this value of L if you're really astute and understand the makeup of uh, the problem and that we remember that L is the carrying capacity. And so it would simply be that high point that this curve can grow. And it even says in the problem that the carrying capacity is going to be 150. And I don't care so much if a student forgot to label. I think it's very important that we do label in this particular case. And so we would say 150 Panthers. And that's it. Part A is finished. Part B. Find B. Well, how appropriate is that, right? Now, if you remember from a previous video, we talked a little bit about the, the procedure to find B is always going to require knowledge about a certain condition. We're going to have to know not only how many panthers exist at a certain time, but we really need to know how many panthers exist at the beginning because we've got to get this E completely eradicated. And so if we read through the problem here, I'm going to highlight the most important information there. And that would be at the very beginning, this conservation organization releases uh, 30 panthers. And so what you're going to do with that is use the idea that at time zero, the population of P is going to be 30. And so we'll plug that information into our P equal equation. And so that would give us 30 equals. We have to use our 150 for L here. 1 plus B. And then if you think about E to the negative K, which we still haven't found K, multiply that K by 0. It's going to eradicate any exponent, just giving you an E to the 0, which of course is 1. And at which point you would be able to cross multiply 30 times 1 plus b is equal to 150. Probably in our best interest to not distribute the 30 because we could just simply divide it over to the other side and then subtract 1. And so our b value is going to be 4 in this particular problem. And now that takes us to part C, which is probably going to be the trickiest of the first three. We want to find this exact value of K. And notice it says that we don't want to write that as a decimal. Now, in order to find this value of K, we're going to have to use another piece of information, another condition. And that condition that we haven't used, I'll highlight here in blue, is after three years, there are 50 panthers. And so that's just the ordered pair 3, 50. And so if I scroll back down here and use that information, 3, 50, and maybe scroll back up so we have our equations form there, we should be able to plug all of this information that we've acquired into that P equal equation. P is 50. 
Remember our L value was 150. We have one plus, now we have our value of B, which is four, E to the, the only thing that we don't have is our K. K is still gonna be multiplied by T. Our T is going to take a value of three on, so a uh, value of three, so we could say negative three K. And I think we now have an equation that should make it possible to solve for the K. And so we're going to do that next. And let's see how much room I have. Yeah, let's go ahead and cross multiply the 50 and the 1 plus 4 e to the negative 3k equaling our 150. And at this point, we could divide the 50 over, obtaining 1 plus 4 e to the negative 3k equivalent to 3. And now we just slowly and surely work our way to solving for the k subtracting a 1, dividing by a 4, 2 over 4 would be 1 half, and at this point we should be able to take the natural logarithm of both sides to obtain uh, an equation that will get the k out of the exponent's position. All right, and so I know a lot of you can probably do the next couple of steps in your head, but in case you're a little confused by this, I want to write those steps out. As I said, the negative 3k will come out in front times the natural log of e, but the natural log of e, of course, is going to be 1. And so we're left with this equation, and then as soon as we divide both sides by negative 3, this would be a possible way to write k. Now, there's more, more ways that you could write this. I guess I want to point out all those variations. Uh, in case uh, you confront them later. But uh, keep in mind that this exponent, that's ne this negative one-third coefficient, could actually serve as an exponent of the one-half. But it would be kind of in our best interest to maybe only let the negative serve as that exponent. Now, why on earth would we do something like that, you might ask? Well, and when you have this negative one exponent, above your one half, right, or acting upon your one half, that actually could flip the one half because one half to the negative one is just two. And it's a little bit cleaner way to write that particular value of k. And um, it also is good because you, you see that the value of k is really positive, right, positive, but that negative here is still going to have to act upon it because we want this to truly be growth. And as I've, I said probably three or four times in a video series with this, less, with this particular topic, is that when E is raised to a negative exponent in the denominator, you have that growth that you need. So essentially any of these three things would suffice. If I was giving this to my students on an exam, and I think I've used this problem way in the past on former assessments, I accepted any of those three. All right, now for part D, we get to write the model for our growth equation for our panther population. So we could say P for panthers. If you want to put his Sunday best clothes on, that'd be fun, right? Panther with his Sunday best clothes on. We'd call it P of T. It just looks a little bit more formal. And then again, we have L over 1 plus Becht right? L over 1 plus Becht. There's the formula that we're using, except we want our B to be 4 and E to the negative 1 third. And I'm going to go ahead, if it's all right with you, use the value of 2 instead of the negative out in front. But careful, this negative here is actually going to be coming from the equation up here. And then all of that would be multiplied by the t, of course. And that takes care of part d. And then we have part e. It says, use that model to estimate the panther population after 12 years. And so we would simply plug 12 in for the t. And I guess we would have something like this. 150 over 1 plus 4 e to the negative one third natural log of two, all multiplied by 12. And we wanna keep in mind that all of that is going to represent an exponent. 
It's possible if you were very savvy, you could likely solve this without the use of a calculator. Uh, I would certainly allow the calculator to be used on this particular problem as I've had many times in the past. So if we type this in, it's gonna look a little something like this. So I'm just using a TI Inspire, but you could use virtually any type of calculator to make this happen for you. So we've got uh, 150, I believe on top, over one plus four multiplied by E. Be very careful here. We wanna make sure we get the negative fraction one over three times the natural log, natural log would be control e to the x, two, and then we want to make sure that that 12 isn't involved in this natural log process, and so what we could do is, well, we, we could put parentheses around that, that plays really safe, I suppose, and then multiply by the 12, and I know we're going to uh, be in very good shape, and the answer turns out to be 120. So because the answer is so nice, you probably could have manipulated this a little bit algebraically, but that's not what the focus of the video is. So let's return back to the document and use this 120 for our answer. And so here we go. We've got this 120 Panthers right there. So it's kind of nice to see these guys growing, right? We had 30 in there initially. And now we're up to uh, 120 of them. And then finally, we get to part F, and it says use uh, or find the limit of the model as t approaches infinity. Now, this is kind of a peculiar question because really deep down, you should know the answer. And I want you just to think about it. Really, what should the answer to this be? All right, had time to think. Well, let's say that we don't realize that we've actually found this answer already. Could we find this limit the old-fashioned way? Could we take our panther population, which is 150 over 1 plus 4 e to the negative 1 half natural log of 2 times t power and make this happen? Well, let's find out. If we were to replace this t with infinity, which kind of a long shot trying to do something like that, but we can at least look and see what the behavior uh, of this particular function is going to look like. And so what we end up with is 150, of course, on top over one plus. Now, it's pretty clear that negative a half times natural log of two is going to produce some negative value. It's going to be a probably a very, very ugly decimal if I had to, if I had to estimate. And so we're going to have 4 times e to this negative decimal times an infinity. And that infinity is going to be now negative. Now, this is just my personal opinion. I don't like to put an equal sign right there because any time that I use infinity inside of some kind of an equivalence relationship, you kind of run the risk of using some bad notation because infinity is not a number. So maybe I could say that this kind of leads to that particular line of thinking. We'll go with that. And so then this can lead to this kind of thinking, 150 over one plus four over e to the infinity power. Just drop that negative infinity down to the bottom. And then after careful consideration, you would hopefully come to the conclusion that that guy right there, right there he is, right? Right there, four over infinity is gonna be zero, four over a really big number. And so lo and behold, you're gonna to come to the conclusion that this is gonna be 150 Panthers, which wait a minute. So you're saying that the carrying capacity of the Panther population is 150? That's how many Panthers we're gonna to really top off at? Well, that's something that we had already decided was going to be true from the very beginning of the problem. So there you go. You've got a logistic differential equation problem here uh, that uses the idea of uh, real world context, finding the value of B throughout, finding the value of K, and kind of putting it all together to understand what the equation is. Anyway, I hope the series over logistic differential equation has been very helpful and that uh, you check out some more of my videos in the future. And until then, Keep studying your calculus.